there, welcome to The Process, a new series on my channel hoping to explore how I make my custom denim. Today we're looking at a custom denim jacket for my friend, so sit back, get a cup of tea and let's get creative. So I'm starting off here by taping off the edges. You can really use anything, I tend to just use sellotape because it's super cheap and I bulk buy it on eBay, but you can use masking tape, duct tape, anything. Next I'm mixing up the paints, so I do two parts acrylic and one part textile medium. One thing to say is that it does take a long time to mix the medium with the paint but it's well worth it to ensure that it sticks to the fabric correctly so keep at it. <laughs> then we're going to take that white and we're going to put it all over the area that we want to paint. The idea of this is creating a blank canvas. It not only makes for brighter colours later on but it also fills in some of the ridges on denim. As you can see here, you normally want to do two coats of that at least. On to the gradient. So as far as gradients go on denim, they can be quite tricky because of the texture of the fabric. But my fail safe method of doing it is to add the darkest colour first, then move up to the second lightest and blend that back down into the darkest and then go up another colour and blend that into the middle colour. And I always do at least two layers to make sure that the ridges don't get in the way of the blend. Then I just repeated that for the blue. For the next part, I just took both colours and flicked them opposite ways, basically. So I flicked the blue onto the yellow and orange, and the orange and yellow onto the blue. Here I'm just dabbing away some extra texture because we're going to paint over this in a minute. For making clouds, you can literally use any paintbrush you have or a Q-tip, and for detail work, Instead of just using a fine brush, you can also use a Kirby grip or a hairpin. I found these work just as well. Moving on to day two, which was D-Day, aka Detail Day. I always leave a whole day where I can just focus on the key detailed elements of the piece, such as the facial features on the sun and moon, which is what I'll be doing today. So here you can see me mapping out where the circle's going to go. I measured the entire length of the jacket in the section that I was painting, halved that and marked it, and then went around and did exactly 10 centimetres from the centre all the way around to create a circle. Now if you had a compass, this would be a lot easier, but unfortunately I didn't, so I improvised. <laughs> Once I had the design mapped out, I put on my white base layer. This again is the same purpose as when we did our white base layer on the entire jacket. It's to fill in more gaps and to make sure that our colours are nice and vibrant when we lay them over the top. <laughs> now, as far as colours go, would not recommend it yellow. I had to do like five coats of this to get it opaque, but it was worth it in the end. <laughs> and now I'm just starting to blend in some orange for the gradient and I'm just using really small strokes because I kind of want it to look like a color. <laughs> Thank you. 
pen to sketch out what I wanted the name to be and then I just went straight in with my white base and I'll be doing two coats of this colour as well because it is part of the design not just a base this time. After I'd done the white base I went in with black over the top but just in the centre of each letter. I really wanted it to look like storybook writing or sort of an old gothic Victorian writing that you might find. I ended up only needing to do one coat of the black on top and that was enough. 